So over the past few months, my channel's been doing pretty well, and more and more people have been reaching out to me recently. We do not care. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to complain or anything. I appreciate everyone's interest in having a conversation with me, but at the same time, it's been pretty easy to notice just how many people don't really know how to reach out the right way. They're just gonna send off a random message and hope for the best. So in this video, I wanna give you some advice on how you can reach out to somebody that you wanna work with, whether that's a business or another fellow creator you wanna collaborate with. Following these tips should give you a little bit of a better chance of actually getting a response. So my first piece of advice is before you even reach out to somebody, you wanna have something ready that you can show them. So that could be something like your website with your portfolio on it, or something as simple as a YouTube playlist with some videos that you've worked on, a Behance gallery, or like a short one or two minute real video. The point is it doesn't have to be super huge and have everything you've ever done in it. It just has to show off your skills in the clearest way possible, because it's gonna be a lot easier to convince someone Somebody that it's worth it to work with you if you're able to show them what you're capable of doing instead of just trying to tell them and hoping that they believe you. And if you're somebody that doesn't have any previous examples of work, you shouldn't be too worried about it because you can just go out and create some spec projects and that basically means creating projects as if a brand hired you to do them but they didn't really hire you and instead you're just doing it in your free time with your own budget and then once you've made a couple of those you can just put them together and use that as an example of your work. My next piece of advice is something that not a lot of people will think about, but it can be really useful, and that's trying to figure out if you have any mutual contacts with whoever you're trying to reach. And what I mean by that is thinking about whether or not you know someone that can introduce you to the person you're trying to message. It could be a friend or a family member or somebody that you've worked with in the past, and it can make that first part a little bit easier because you're not just gonna be a random person sending a message message and hoping that they take the time to read it. And even if your mutual contact doesn't directly introduce you to whoever you're trying to talk to, you can just like get their contact from the person that you know. And then after you introduce yourself in your initial email or message, you could just be like, hey, I'm friends with this person or I've worked with this person and I got your contact from them. And that should give you a little bit of starting credibility as kind of like a baseline. And it's gonna make it much more likely that they continue reading the rest of your message because again, you're not just a random person messaging them out of the blue. But I fully realize that not everyone will be in a situation where you have someone that can introduce you like that. So don't worry about it. It's definitely not something that has to happen. And you can absolutely still reach out to people without that initial introduction. So my next piece of advice is to always do your research because you really have to know who you're reaching out to. And first of all, remember to try and reach out to actual people. Don't just like send messages messages to random support or info emails, even though ironically that's something that I've done before a couple of times and it has worked out, but it's not something that you can do reliably because most of the time you're just gonna get ignored. So if you're trying to contact a business, the first thing you wanna do is figure out what they're all about, what their core message is, and then you try to find somebody working at that business that you can get in touch with. If you're trying to contact a fellow creator that you wanna collaborate with, you wanna look at the previous projects that they've kind of shared with their audience, and you wanna try to figure out how what you're offering could potentially fit into a future one. Even before reaching out to anybody, you have to be like really clear about what what benefits they would be getting from working with you. And that kind of leads us to my next piece of advice, which is always trying to figure out a way to offer some sort of value to whoever you're reaching out to. If you're trying to work with a brand, maybe come up with an idea that fits into their brand language and pitch it to them, or better yet, just go out and create a spec project around that idea, and then you can try getting their attention by showing them the final thing. If you're trying to work with a production company, maybe offer shooting some behind the scenes photos or videos, or just like being a production assistant on one of their future projects. And if you're trying to work with a fellow creator, maybe offer to help with something that they're working on, or even something as simple as just like going out and grabbing a coffee and having a chat. 
There are a lot of different ways that you can provide value to someone, but you honestly really want to get into the mindset of being completely okay with giving more than you're expecting to potentially receive from working together. And remember that sometimes providing value can be something as simple as just being a normal person that's cool to be around and hang out with. So now we're gonna go into a few more specific tips for making your first message good whenever you're reaching out. First up, you wanna keep things short. People are busy and the last thing you wanna do is like drop a wall of text in front of someone that they have to read through. You wanna get to your point as quickly as you possibly can. You wanna introduce yourself and what you do as quickly as possible and then spend the majority of your message focusing on how you can be helpful to whoever you're reaching out to. You also wanna try to keep it conversational and friendly and not like overly official and dry, but still you want to be respectful because you're not really friends with whoever you're talking to, at least not yet. And that said, you want to still sound like an actual human speaking to another human. If you're thinking about saying something that doesn't sound like you would say it in a real life conversation, it's probably going to sound weird if you send it off as a message as well. Also, if you're able to make your message a little bit more personalized by mentioning something that you like about the company or the person that you're trying to work with, it's a great way to show that you're genuinely interested in working with them and you're not just trying to reach out to them for the paycheck. You also want to try to make sure that your message itself looks presentable because that way you're showing that you actually care about what you've said and it's not just something that you put together in between doing something else. But that being said, there are a bunch of free resources online that you can use to help with stuff like grammar and punctuation and just making whatever you've written look good in general so you can try to use some of those and putting in that extra effort is going to show that you're serious about what you've said. Then you want to try to end your message in a way that leaves the door open for future conversation and if you've been following all of the tips so far you should have a pretty decent chance of that happening. The last and arguably the most important tip of this section is going to be that if you haven't heard back in a couple of days after messaging you always want to remember to try and follow up. Sometimes people might be interested in whatever you're offering, but your message just caught them at a bad time and they just forgot to answer. That's something that's happened to me a bunch of times and it's not something that a lot of people think about, but it can definitely be the difference between actually getting a conversation started or completely being ignored. So before we wrap things up, I want to quickly mention that there are going to be certain brands and businesses that have way too big of a following and getting in touch with someone that represents them is going to be a lot harder in general. And kind of the same goes for some creators out there, because if they already have a really big audience, chances are there's a bunch of people already trying to get in touch with them. And I'm not saying any of this to try and discourage you, but the point is that if you've messaged someone and you haven't gotten a response, it's probably not because they're trying to intentionally ignore you or be rude to you. Maybe you just caught them at a bad time or they're already dealing with a bunch of stuff and they don't have the time to respond. So there's definitely gonna be a little bit of luck involved, but if you haven't gotten a response the first time around, there's nothing wrong with just like trying again down the line. So I hope you found this video helpful. As always, I really appreciate it if you made it to the end. Consider sticking around by subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.